Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and today I want to talk about the metals versus the miners. Now, I'm talking about gold and silver mining companies, and there are major miners and minor miners, <laughs> but we're just going to lump all of them together. So this is a, a, a video about the product versus the companies that dig up that product. Uh, and you have to realize that when you are investing in precious metals mining stocks, you're not investing in precious metals. You're investing in people you're investing in a company, you're investing in a jurisdiction, you're investing in a geology, uh, you're investing in their ability to deal with political systems. There's just a whole host of potential problems and you need to know the difference. And uh, there are certain aspects that you'll see later in this video where uh, one thing that uh, supports the price of gold and silver and ensures that it, it can't go down and stay down is also the same thing that can cause a company to fold and your mining stock to go to zero. So this is from North Star Charts. And what he's done here, uh, I've never done this with the ASA, which is a precious metals fund. So this is a fund that contains a bunch of different mining stocks in it. And it's got 54 years of history. Um, and he says the HUI and GDX track it beautifully. Now, uh, he doesn't show just the fund here. So you can't overlay HUI and GDX. Uh, we don't have pictures of that here. But uh, the GDX only goes back a few years. And the HUI goes back before that. Um, there's another one called the XAU, which is the Philadelphia Gold Mining Index, um, the Gold Bugs Index, they call it also. Uh, it goes back into the late 90s. Um, but uh, by, by the way, uh, XAU, the Philadelphia Gold Bugs Index, it gets confusing because XAU USD is the price of gold, XAU is an index of mining stocks. So anyway, the reason this is going down is because this is the ASA Precious Metals Fund divided by the price of gold. And what this shows is that over the long run, gold and silver, the physical metals, outperform the mining stocks. There are these brief periods of time where the mining stocks outperform the metals and the leverage can be spectacular uh, and it charms people and they tend to stay they experience that one time and they're addicted to it so they stay in that sector but over the long period of time this is the reason that i've always said build your core position in physical precious metals and then with your gambling currency do some other things some speculation because investing i, I don't see investing in the metals themselves as speculation I see that as a guaranteed win over the long run because the guarantee is that the world's central banks will never stop printing currency. And as long as they do, that means that the uh, currency uh, has to lose value over a long period of time. If the quantity of currency is exceeding the uh, growth of the goods and services available in an economy, the cost of those goods and services as measured by the currency supply, the quantity of currency, uh, the cost has to go up because there's more currency units. So the ability for the currency units to store the value that's in those real goods and services, the currency is basically getting smaller and smaller. Uh, so anyway, um, this just, if, if you look at the, this is very, very dramatic. I mean, you take the top of this chart and you're at um, 0.13. And where is it today? It's, at, it's below 0 0.01. Well, you can flip that upside down and you can say that that means, and it does, that uh, gold, the physical precious metal, and by the way, this is, I didn't do the math here before this video, but this is at 0.086. I should take 13 and divide it by 0.086. But if it was at one, this area right here, it means that gold outperformed this precious metals fund by a factor of 13 times over this period. 
that's huge. And so um, one of the so I'm going to move along here. Where's my tabs? Uh, so this is in my new book, but I've spoken about this many times and I've presented it in many, many videos uh, going way back to the crisis of 08 and such. Um, this is the same chart, but since it's filling the entire chart, it doesn't look quite as down tilted. If you took this where the, you know, today and squeezed it over to the middle of the chart, this would have a much steeper look to it like the other chart. Uh, but this is showing the Barron's Gold Mining Index, which goes back way, way back. I think it goes all the way back into the 30s. Uh, this is one of the most popular mining indexes when it comes to historic data and divided by the price of gold. And, you know, I was, I, I was lucky enough to catch, there, there's uh, three big up waves here. So this is this century, 2000, 1999 was actually the, uh, the lowest price of gold um, since nine, between 1980 and today. It was about the, the bottom in 2001 was about $3 higher than the 1999 low. Uh, so the beginning of the bull market really started there, but uh, you know, it was a double bottom pretty much. Um, I didn't know about uh, that much about gold uh, in the beginning of that bull market. Then I learned about uh, gold and started buying in October of, tw of 2002. And then there was this uh, up leg in stocks where they outperformed gold. Then I found out about silver and about mining stocks in uh, April of 2003, I believe it was. And I was lucky enough to catch this last up leg here. Then I decided that I was going to wrap my life around this. And in uh, August of 2005, I incorporated uh, goldsilver.com. I, I bought the websites in 2005 and I incorporated. And um, <clears throat> then I wrote my book uh, from 2005 through 2007. But I had been preparing for this for years. I had been reading books and, and putting tabs in them, uh, highlighting stuff, all of the research had gone on for about three years before I started writing the book. And then writing the book took from 2000, took 2005, 2006, and 2007. So uh, about six years of research and two and a half years of writing and editing. Uh, but then uh, after the book was done, I did a study on, I did this study. I took the Barron's Gold Mining Index, and I don't remember the reason I did it, divided it by the price of gold, discovered that gold over the long term had way, way outperformed the precious metals. And I was lucky enough to sell the vast majority of my stocks while it was still up here. And I had, I bought them down here, sold them up here. So gold, uh, the, the stocks had outperformed gold. And then after the crisis of 08, there were all these losses. Now, I had one company, it was called Quatera. I'll let be, I don't have it anymore, so I'll let everybody know. But that was a silver uranium play. And I um, sold one tranche of that at, at 40 times. It was a 40 bagger, 40 times my investment. Um, and so I did really well from here to here. But over the long run, uh, the mining stocks can be very, they introduce an awful lot of risk. Uh, in my for, in my book, Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver, the one that came out in 2008, there's another one coming out uh, right now, that Barron's Gold Mining chart, that is actually from the book that is uh, coming out uh, within a couple of weeks here. Um, so, mining stocks and mutual funds introduce risk, whereas gold and silver cannot go bankrupt. A mine can have, a, have labor disputes, permitting and licensing problems, can be shut down by environmental agencies like the EPA uh, and can suffer from bad management, bad bookkeeping, and a host of other problems that never seem to quit, including nationalization. Many mines are located in countries that have histories of economic problems and military coups. And that is true. So just remember, when you're buying gold and silver, you're buying the physical asset. 
It's not attached to any company unless you're buying it inside of an ETF or some fund or something like that. When you actually buy the physical metal, then you own it. Uh, it doesn't require the performance of any other company. Now, this is the price of gold from August 15th, 1971, when Nixon took the world off of gold. And it's at $44 uh, here. Uh, the free market price had been diverging from the central bank price of $35. And uh, it, the free market price happened to be $44.22.22 uh, when we went off of the Bretton Woods system. <laughs> that is the reason that the, uh, the uh, statutory price of gold uh, on the books, the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury, both account for their gold at $44.2222. <laughs> it's totally insane. But you see here this first big up leg and then a pullback. Uh, interesting here, this pullback, the first day of 1975 is when this started. This is also the first day that Americans were legally allowed to own gold again. It was illegal for Americans to own gold here. And so all of the gold coinage and stuff that had been uh, hoarded from 1933 until the last day of 75, uh, 74, um, and the first, the first day of 75, it was legal for them to sell their coins and bars. They could disclose that they actually had this stuff that their father or their grandfather uh, left them, and a lot of that did hit the market. But we went into this uh, brutal bear market, I believe it was 28 months, and did a 50% retracement, and then it was off to the races. Now, what I find interesting is most people have not done a study on the stocks versus uh, gold. But if you look at the, uh, the stocks, uh, this is called, gold hit its peak. It was actually 873 on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, Chicago Board of Trades, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, intraday pricing. So there was the absolute high was 873 so it was up off the top of this chart but the stocks did the, and then gold pulled back down you know into the uh, 400s and did what's called a dead cat bounce this is where the stocks peaked if you do a, a chart of the barons gold mining index or i'm sure if you do it of that fund that we were asa fund uh you'll see that it's high was actually uh in 19 later in 1980 not in January of 1980 when gold peaked. And so this is the crowd chasing yesterday's news. I remember watching a movie called Brewster's Millions with uh, Richard Pryor in it. And John Candy, his friend, is trying to protect him and gets him this financial planner. And he goes, oh yeah, he's got me in collectibles and in this and that and gold and silver. And it was already yesterday's news. So the movie came out here where it was time to be buying stocks. And they're talking about anything but the stock market. It was time for stocks and real estate here, especially stocks and gold. Uh, you know, so he's talking about getting into gold at 600 and it's going to go down to 250 over the next 20 years. So bad time to be in precious metals. Uh, now, I mentioned that this starts at August 15th and 71. So I'm going to go all the way back to 1970. So you can see when gold was back at $35 an ounce. This is the world's central banks losing control of gold. They are, um, it, you know, it crept up to that $44 uh, and 22.22 .22 uh, when Nixon was absolutely forced by gold, by the will of the public and the free market, uh, he was forced to take us off of the Bretton Woods system and close that gold window. And so um, uh, I just find it interesting that the government doesn't actually have control over this no matter what they do. And investigate, just do an internet search on the London gold pool. They were dumping tons and tons and tons of gold into the open market to try and keep the uh, price suppressed. And then other the other countries in the London gold pool 
figured out that this was a losing battle and stopped, and the United States kept on dumping, but it didn't work, and we were forced to stop and end the Bretton Woods system. Now, I want to say, you know, I've spoken with a number of politicians, and there is one that stuck out to me as uh, head and shoulders above the rest, and you may not agree, you might think that the guy is a nut, except when you ask a politician a question, Uh, When they start to answer, the first portion of their answer is usually some sort of fluff, very often stuff that has nothing to do with the topic. Uh, And that is because they're thinking, they're trying to frame, oh, how am I going to answer this question and not offend this group of people, but keep this group of people. And uh, that is because when you live your life based on lies, you always have to figure out how to keep those lies concealed and covered up. When you live your life based on absolute honesty, you don't have to think about your answer. It just comes blurting out immediately. I've only met one politician that does that. It was Congressman Ron Paul. I have great respect for this man. And here he is. Ron Paul tells his fans he's sorry he couldn't do more as he seals himself up in his bunker. I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. At goldsilver.com, we have a price match guarantee, free shipping, and global storage options. Thanks for making goldsilver.com your bullion dealer.